guys, Lando Assistant here and let's revisit this classic exponential problem. x raised to y equals y raised to x where x is not equal to y and x and y are elements of the set of real numbers. This is an algebra problem where you can practice your algebraic skills because this will involve a lot of algebraic manipulation. Notice that we have here an equation containing two variables. And when there are more variables than the number of equations, we expect to get not only a pair of answers for x and y here, but we are expecting a lot of ordered pairs x, y that can satisfy this equation. To give us an idea of what are those possible solutions set to this problem, let's take a look at the case when x equals 4 and y equals 2. If x equals 4, substituting 4 for x and 2 for y, we have here 4 squared, which is equal to 16, and 2 to the 4th, which is also equal to 16. And so, x equals 4 and y equals 2 is an ordered pair that satisfies this equation. But our goal in this lesson is to find the general formula that we can use in order to identify any solution set to this equation. You can pause the video and see if you can solve this algebra problem. Now, let's solve this problem together. Let's recall our definition of exponent. When we have x raised to y, that means we multiply x to itself y number of times. But in this case, we do not know what's the value of y. Observing the right side, notice that x is a multiple copies of itself. The right side is a multiple of x, and we can write that as u times x. Where u is a constant, let's put this result to the side and we'll use that later on. Next, we also define y raised to x as y multiplied by itself x number of times. And similar to our first analysis for x raised to y, we look at the right side also as multiples of y and write that as certain constant v times y. And so we now have these two values for x raised to y and y raised to x. Since two quantities that are equal to the same quantities are equal, then we can now form this equation. Let's concentrate our attention to this last equation. By symmetric property of equality, let's interchange the left side and the right side, so we have y at the left side. And solving for y, we have y equals u over v times x. Since this u over v is just another constant, let's rewrite that as y equals m times x, where m is u over v. This now indicates that y is just a multiple of x. Let's remember that value. Now, let's go back to the original equation and substitute our result y equals mx whenever we see the variable y. So we copy x, y is equal to mx, then this y is equal to mx, then we copy x. The common mistake here is to neglect this parenthesis. Then let's recall the loss of exponents. Notice that x raised to mx is the same form as this le3. So using now the converse of law of exponent number 3 here, this left side of the equation can now be rewritten as the quantity x raised to m all raised to x, which is this left side of LA3. And we just copy the right side. Now since we are solving for the variable x, we want to eliminate this exponent x by raising both sides of this equation to 1 over x, provided that x is not equal to 0 because division by zero is undefined. And apply again law of exponent number three, we can simplify this by simply multiplying the exponents n times m, in this case, the exponent x times one over x. Now, since x times one over x are reciprocals, the left side is simply this base x raised to m, that applies also to the right side. We have variable x at the left and we have variable x at the right side. We can gather all these variables by dividing both sides by x, to arrive at this equation now. Then apply again this law of exponent. Notice that we are dividing here exponential numbers. It's implied that the exponent of x is one. So applying Le2, we just have to subtract the exponent m and the exponent one that is implied here at the left side. So we now have this result. x raised to m minus the exponent of one here that is equal to the right side m. We can continue simplifying this to isolate the variable x this way. Again, we can raise both sides of the equation to 1 over m minus 1, which is the reciprocal of the exponent m minus 1. The objective is 
to isolate the variable x. And we do the same thing at the right side. Now apply again this law of exponent number 3, and since these exponents are multiplicative inverses, the left side is simply the base x, and we just copy the right side. And notice that we now have our solution for x. x is now equal to m raised to 1 over m minus 1, where m is a certain constant. We are going to revisit this later on. Let's go back to this equation, y equals mx. You have here the variable x, but we already have this explicit result for x. So let's do the necessary substitution now. We copy y, we copy equals m, but replace x by our explicit value of x here now, which is m times 1 over m minus 1. We are multiplying here exponential numbers, where m has an exponent 1, and this second m has this green exponent. Applying again the law of exponents, we multiply exponential numbers by simply adding their respective exponents. So we copy the common base m, and we add the exponents 1 over m minus 1 plus the implied exponent of 1 here, which is now this white 1. And simplifying this exponent, we arrive at m raised to m over m minus 1, where m over m minus 1 is the simplified form of 1 over m minus 1 plus 1. And we now have our explicit formula for y. y is equal to m raised to m over m minus 1. And we now have these two formulas, one for computing for x, and the other is for computing for y. But what does this accomplish? We just rewrite x in terms of another variable m, and we rewrite y in terms of another variable m. Well, these two formulas enable us to find specific values for x and y by substituting any real number to this variable m. And later on, we are going to define what are the restrictions of this m. So, let's assign first a value for m. Let's say m is equal to 4. If m equals 4, then we can replace all the m's by 4, replace all the m's by 4, and we now arrive at this result. x is equal to 4 raised to 1 third, and y equals 4 raised. Now, substituting these two values, one for x and one for y, into the original equation, we now have this result. And we would like to check if we arrive at a true statement here. So let's get some help from Wolfram Alpha. This has an advanced AI technology to evaluate whether our equation is always true or not. And Wolfram Alpha says that this equation is always true. So at m equals 4, we verified that these values for x and values for y are indeed a solution set for the original equation. Now, what if m equals negative number? Let's say if we let m be equal to negative 1. If m equals negative 1, let's substitute all the m's again by negative 1, and we have this result. x equals negative 1 raised to negative 1 half, and y equals negative 1 raised to 1 half. That is, at m equals negative 1. And substituting these values to the original equation, we now have this result. So let's call in again our good friend Wolfram Alpha and ask if this equation is indeed true. And according to this advanced AI calculator, this equation is really true. So even if m equals negative 1, still the formula holds. But notice that there should be some restrictions to the value of m. Because division by 0 is undefined, we cannot let m to be equal to 1. And since 0 raised to 0 would result to an indeterminate form, then we also restrict that m cannot be equal to 0. And so these are now the formulas that will enable us to find the solution set to this classic exponential problem. So thank you very much and please don't forget to watch our next video. This will help you improve your skills in algebra. This is Lando Assistant and we'll see you again in our next video.